<laughs> so I started this training and and the second reason why I started this training was that I've been doing this Citrix work style uh, working from Brazil since 2008 so I needed an extra income in case my boss didn't let me go but he did so this is my uh, beach house that I use in the weekends oh. so it's a horrible life it's good to do training. it is so. <laughs> We could go here and have the uh, the first E2VC in Brazil. We can have it in my condominium. That's the next location, Alex. Eat Brazil. Well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the first one is Australia. So I actually ended up. Who stole all the What connector? The, the, the connectors for the. Sorry, I'll cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm going to make a proper one to send to you. The connectors so. for the VGA to clean the display. I have like six of them here. Out of room, maybe? All these legs going on the sinks left in the room, is it? So, so I created the training and, and the, uh, the boss actually did let me go. So I've been working in Brazil remotely through uh, Norwegian customers. Uh, they actually did let me go this month, so I'm going to start independent next, next month. So everything that you have to do twice, you should and you should uh, automate it. Because it's repeating and installing the operation system is it's kind of boring. Uh, the title of this session, I think, was the uh, uh, automated send desktop POC in 45 minutes. And we can actually do that. So what I'm using in this framework is uh, the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. And I've been creating a lot of custom tasks. This is the same framework you have seen from Aaron Parker, but I've extended it really, really much. So I'm going to show a video uh, just to do some background here. What we have here is a base vanilla installation of Windows 2012. Uh, we have the normal system drive. We have a D drive for the MDT shares and the Visos. And we have downloaded and mounted the 2012 ISO image. The reason why we do that is the PowerShell script that I'm not going to run that I'm going to run now, will automatically import the operation system inside of the workbench. And it will also automatically create the uh, booted images that you need afterwards. So let's switch here. The uh, video doesn't work too well inside of the PowerPoint. So as you can see here, it's mounted, as I explained. We have downloaded the uh, automation framework and extracted it to the D drive. And this contains all the frameworks, everything you need. The only thing you need to copy in there is the uh, Citrix stuff. So what I'm doing now, I'm going inside of the, the bootstrap file and just changing the server name. Because we need that when we're going to create the ISO images. So I have two shares, MDP build and production, one for creating reference images and the other one for production. Just go in and change those two init files. And then we open the PowerShell as an administrator. And we're going to set the execution policy. No. Navigate to the script. <laughs> and then run it. I'm a Batman. I'm not a PowerShell guru. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now it actually goes in and it's configured the features, it configured the roles, it downloads the MDT if you don't have it on the computer as well with the uh, automation deployment toolkit. So it starts importing all the task sequences and the application that I already created. And there we are importing the OS Vim. 
They have all the task sequences. And finally, it's going to build the boot ISO image. So you can actually grab that boot ISO image and boot up straight to the uh, deployment. So how does it look like? This is how it looks like <clears throat> when the installation is finished. It will automatically reboot the server. So when you get in here inside of the workbench, you can see all the Citrix products, for example. We also have the same with Microsoft, with all the, the C++ frameworks that you need. Uh, so we have different roles here. We have uh, Send Desktop, 7.1, 7.5, all roles, Control or Control and Storefront, and so on. The same goes for the uh, task sequences. As you can see here, we have a lot. And every time I create a new video inside of my training, I create a task sequence for that one. So uh, as you can see there, we have a send, send mobile device manager that will automatically install all the features that you need. It will ins install the JDK from Java. It will copy over the, uh, the uh, YAR files that you need. It will disable IPv6. and set the user access control. Everything automated. So if you need to, you just spin them up and, and they're ready to go. So if you take a look here inside of one of the task sequences, this is uh, Windows 7 SP1 with Send Desktop 7.5, VDA with MCS. So as you can see, we have a lot of tasks going on here. Dependencies, for example, is a bundle and inside of that bundle, we have all the Visual C++ that we need to be able to install AppV later. For those of you who have tried to install the AppV client on Windows 7, it's a pain in the ass. It's a lot of uh, C++ that needs to go in there. You also need to install PowerShell. So we do that. We install AppV client. We do the uh, VDA for Send Desktop 7.5. Uh, we have another bundle there called Send Desktop VS. 08, and that includes the app v5 scheduler from Bram Wolfs. So I'm using that in all my employments. It's very nice. And then at the end, we do another Windows update, restart the computer, and then finally install the Splunk Universal Forwarder and Eberadian. The reason why we do that in the end, because we, we're going to remove the unique identifier when you do cloning. So we do that in the end, shut down the image, and we are good to go. So let's see how that works. So now we are inside of VMM. We're going to select the template. We're going to create two machines. So the first one is going to be the senders of delivery controller. So we just put it on the hypervisor using SMB3 here. Spin it up. Then we're going to create a Windows 7 machine, which is going to be our master image. So we're just going to call it Revision 01, since we don't have any revision control inside of Send Desktop. And now we connect to the console and then scroll down and select the proper task sequence that we want to install. <coughs> That's pretty much it. Now it's going to configure REST for you. I have not automated the creation of the Send Desktop site. That's pretty simple. It's next, next finished. So you could automate that as well if you would like. But keep it stupid simple. SQL Express, SQL Server, RDS. You know, I'm going to show that afterwards. So it's pretty simple, pretty fast. I'm going to show you how it looks like afterward. So 
I just have a PowerPoint reader here, so. Yeah, now with the TechNet stuff going away, it's a pain in the ass. So additional tools, uh, AppV5 installation and tuning. Uh, we're going to cover the AppV5 scheduler, 2.0. Classic Shell, uh, the baseline tuning script from Citrix. Uh, we're going to cover the automation master image creation. Uh, refer to the reference image that Anton asked about, and then Splunk and Uber agent. So this is probably too small to read. But MDT is just using scripts to install, so as long as you can create an unattended installation, you just put it in there. So what we're doing here with the AppV Franklin install, we, go, we enable the shared content store mode, accept license, we enable the package scripts that you need if you want to do script inside of the AppV packages, and we also disable the no background registry staging for AppV AppV Scheduler, uh, prior to the release of Hotfix 4 that just came out now for AppV 5, SP2, uh, you needed to create a service account. Uh, what I read, you don't need it anymore, but I haven't been able to test it. But you need to create a service account, add a service account to the local administration group, and define the service and the file share. Now with the release of AppV Scheduler 2.0, we can unattend everything. So now that's included in the automation framework as well. So it simply simply works out of the box. Classic Shell, uh, it's a great uh, software that you can use to bring back the start menu to Windows 8 and 2012. It's a normal unattended installation there as well. Uh, we have the Windows 8 and 2012 tuning scripts from Citrix. Uh, so you simply create a task put the script inside of the script folder and just call it with the C script from, from the task. So this is how it looks. So you just select the task and then you import it, uh, you create a machine catalog and you build up machines. Any flavor you want to run Windows 7, Windows 8, 2012, 2008, you get the same. It, it uses FV, it uses the FV uh, scheduler to suck in all those packages inside of your desktop. So it's really, really nice and it's really fast. So, question regarding the uh, master image creation. Let's see, where is that? When you create a, a reference images, you use a vanilla ISO and you put all the Windows updates on top. And you want to do that regularly because if you don't, it will take quite some time to install 150 updates to Windows 7. For that reason, you should update your reference images once a week, no, once a month. So we get a, that, all that stuff inside of the WIM that we used when we run this uh, deployment. So what we have here is as you can see, we are using the priority here, so we check for the MAC address. So we have the MAC address where we skip the task sequence, we skip the capture. We do capture, we define the location of the capture. We define the name of the file, the task sequence. We're going to skip the final summary and we're going to shut down the VM afterwards. The reason why we do that is we are running a PowerShell script that checks that the VM is running. So when the uh, Deployment is finished, it's going to shut down the VM and it's going to delete the VM running on Hyper-V in this in case. And we also have a, a move command here in, uh, at the end. Move the task to your production share. So from the build share to the production share. So everything is ready to go. So let's see how that looks. So here we run the script. We create the VM, set the MAC address. The MAC address is what's the most important because we're going to use that in the MDT framework. Create the machine. It will automatically grab the task sequence that we defined and it will automatically start the deployment. It will then apply the patches. It will then create the VIM. 
And then we will finally move the VIM, shut down the machine, and the PowerShell script will delete that VM. So you just, you just start it and let it run in the background. Thanks. That's actually up on the blog, so you can find the uh, PowerShell script there. Yeah, so that's the script. You could do, yeah. So why do you why do we use an automation framework? Because people make mistakes. <laughs> and it got better when we got PVS and MCS. But for those of you who have read the blog post from Andrew Morgan regarding people fucking up the PVS as well. Of course, as long as if you don't follow the procedure, it will crash. Just a matter of time. So you go in there as a consultant, put it up, it's excellent. You leave and come back because something went wrong. So let's take an example. Let's say you have Uber agent. You have a master image. You boot up the master image because you're going to install some hotfix or something. And you forget to run the script to remove the identifier for Splunk. Or, yeah, the Splunk forwarder. So what happens, you go into Uber agent and you cannot get any stats because you have one machine name. OK, so you figure it out. You go in again, run it, shut it down, deploy it. Takes a lot of time with MCS, by the way. Uh, and you boot it up, and through the Uber agent, you see that, oh, why does my boot time now go from 30 seconds to two minutes? Why? Because you forgot to run the, the antivirus pre-scan. So for this reason only, you should always automate your automation, uh, your master image creation. And we have, I also have a lot of other stuff that I don't show here, but we also have the, the uh, North scale agent inside here pre-scripted, so you just go in and enable it, and you, you can roll that out as well if you want. So that brings us to money. That's another thing. How many here is working by the hour? Yeah. By the hour, by the hour. Yeah. So I prefer to sell fixed price products and take the risk on me. And let's say you're going to do a send desktop uh, POC. You sell it to the customer for 40 hours, $8,000. That's $200 an hour. So if you can deliver this in, in half the time, you, you're going to earn $400 an hour. You know? And, and I, I haven't done the calculation now, but if you do this in 45 minutes, you get a lot of money. You know? <laughs> so. If you go to my setup training, you will find a lot of great testimonials. I brought this one up because this goes specially to, to the uh, MDT framework that I've created. That's only accessible inside of my training, of course. Uh, as and you can see here, we have one client. He has been using this as his foundation, foundation on all his products for the last six months. So it saves a lot of time. And I constantly make new stuff there. Uh, Luckily, I became part of the CTP program, and that let me have access to Sendus of 7.5 a couple of weeks before it went live. So I could create all the task sequences for Sendus of 7.5. I also created an update video for Sendus of 7.1 to 7.5, and I released it the same day that Citrix released Sendus of 7.5. So I do a lot of training. Uh, I do training that works. It's not like you go into any uh, Citrix training. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't take me wrong. You have, you, I, I used to be a trainer. Carl's a trainer. Alex is a trainer. You have good trainers, but you also have bad trainers. So you can go in. You can spend like $3,000 on a course, and you get back, and you, yeah, you understand less than you did when you went in. So we create a lot of new models each month. I do module creation based on, on the feedbacks from the customer. 
right now we're starting to do a lot of uh, send mobile stuff instead of the training. Not only that, uh, you also get unlimited free support. Uh, I have access to this help to system from any device. I have responded to a couple of thousands tickets and as you can see there in the upper left the response time is 12 hours so it's pretty good. So we created a special discount for you guys so if you don't have access you can grab it here. For all the CTPs that don't have an access just contact me and uh, we will fix it. So that was my short presentation. Hope you like it. Oh.